Hi everybody, I'm Miss Retha. Welcome back to CKM Saturday. Sorry I missed week before last, but I had some technical difficulties. You know, I'm still at the beach in Gulf Shores. And uh, did you know that Gulf Shores was actually an island? Yeah. Before they built the first bridge in 1956, you actually had to t use a ferry to get over to Gulf Shores. Well, the natives here have a saying that when you're here, you're living on island time. And that means go really slow and just relax. Well, after being here for about two months, I have come to realize that island time affects everything. From plumbers who can't get here until next week or two, to DirecTV who never gets here at all, and absolutely absurd speed limits. Have you ever heard of a 26 mile per hour speed limit? I even saw one the other day that was 17 miles per hour. Who in the world can go that slow? Well, I'm known to drive a little fast every now and then, and uh, police chief Long and Hansville even calls me speedy. So these speed limits down here are driving me nuts. Anyway, it seems that the Wi-Fi down here is also on island time. It took me 36 hours to upload my videos. So I got stressed and Brother Philip, my editor, also got stressed and that's the reason I didn't get the lesson up on the video last week. So I apologize for that. But I wanna take a minute and recap the lesson we missed. Do you remember I asked you how expensive it was to follow Jesus? I bet you thought I was talking about money, didn't you? Nope. The name of the lesson was the cost of following Jesus. When we follow Jesus, we can't always expect things to go great and be happy all the time. We have to think, we have to expect things to be sad and hard too. When you choose to follow Jesus, you have to give him complete control of your life and that's not easy. He tells us to spread his gospel to be around other Christians, and to do what he would do in every situation. It's not easy, guys. Some of it is, and some of it isn't. The thing is, we have to try our best to be like him. If we try our best, then we know that we'll have a forever life with Jesus in heaven, don't we? We can and will be happy on earth, too. Happiness comes and goes, but joy is a feeling deep down inside and it stays with us forever. And true joy comes when we go to be with the Father in heaven. Following Jesus isn't easy, but it is so worth it. Before we get started on today's story, I wanna play a little word game with you using sentences and every word in our sentences have to start with the letter G, all right? I've got four sentences here that I'm my made up, and they're crazy, so just be prepared. The first one is, growing goats gets gross. The second one is, Glenn got going galloping gazelles. The third one is, Glum Gus gulped goldfish. And my last one is that I made up is green geckos gathered glowing glue. This sounds easy, but it's not easy. And I know my sentences don't make any sense. I want y'all to practice some of those sentences after our lesson today. It's, it's kind of fun to do. They're all nonsense, but I hope y'all can do better than I did. But I have a really good sentence that starts with all G's and it's God gives good gifts. Today, we're gonna to be learning about one of God's good gifts, and he has a bunch of them. The one we're gonna be talking about today is prayer. But let's talk about some of God's good gifts first. Can you think of some good gifts God has given you? Oh, I can. He gives me God wings all the time. And he gave me my family, whom I love dearly. And he gave me each and every one of you too whom I love dearly. But the best gift God has given me is my salvation. Because one day I know I'm gonna be with him in heaven. 
let's talk about what prayer means. What do you think? It's just talking to God. We don't have to wait for him to get ready to listen to us because he's always listening. We can tell him anything too. How we feel, what we think, what we want. When we're mad or sad or glad. We're going to learn that God loves to answer our prayers too. We're going to learn that God will always hear our prayers. Prayer is an amazing gift. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, and I want to share that lesson with y'all today. But let's look at our big picture question first. <clears throat> what did Jesus teach when he was on earth? Jesus taught about God and his kingdom. He taught that all scripture is about him, didn't he? Well, learning how to pray is part of what we need to know to live in God's kingdom. A few weeks ago, we learned about the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus taught people how to live in God's kingdom. We learned how we feel in our heart is just as important as how we act on the outside. And earlier, we talked about following Jesus isn't easy, but it's so worth it. Our story today comes from Luke chapters 11 and 18. Let's watch our story up video. Jesus had just finished praying when one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. So Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not bring us into temptation. Then Jesus told them a story. Imagine one of you goes to a friend at midnight and says, friend, let me borrow three loaves of bread because a friend of mine has traveled to visit me and I don't have anything to offer him. The friend shouts from inside his house, go away, my family is in bed. I don't want to get up to help you. What? Even though the man does not want to help his friend, he will get up and give his friend what he needs because he asked boldly. Jesus told the story to teach the disciples about prayer. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Jesus asked, does any father when his son asks for a fish give him a snake instead? <gasps> or if the son asks for an egg, does the father give him a scorpion? <gasps> Jesus said that fathers who are sinners know how to give good gifts to their children. God is an even greater father. He gives the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Jesus told another story, a parable, to teach the disciples to pray without giving up. In a town was a judge who did not care about God or people. Over and over, a widow went to the judge and asked him to protect her from wrongdoing. The judge did not want to help, but after a while he said, I will give this widow what she wants so she does not keep bothering me. Jesus pointed out that the unjust judge did what was right because the widow did not give up. When people cry out to God day and night, will he ignore them? Jesus asked. No, he will quickly make things right. Jesus wanted his followers to have faith that doesn't give up. Jesus taught us to pray. Because of Jesus, we can pray to God as a father and ask for what we need. We can trust that God is good and loving, and we can count on him to do what is right. One thing I love about this story is the Lord's Prayer. Y'all know that that's just one of my favorite things in the whole world, don't you? Well, Jesus tells us how we should pray and what we should pray about in the Lord's Prayer. You don't have to use fancy words or, or Jesus' exact words. 
but we always need to start our prayers out with praising our Father and showing our faith in Him and His kingdom. Then pray for ourselves and others. Another thing I love about this story was Jesus used analogies, which is just a fancy word for parables. A parable is kind of like a comparison to something that we're familiar with. It helps us to understand things better, like comparing two things that don't fit together. Remember that lesson we had on metaphors? Well, parables are a lot like that. Take, for instance, life is like a box of chocolates. Well, how in the world do you compare a box of chocolates to life? Okay, let's say it's Valentine's Day and you've got a huge box of chocolates. You open it up and you try to decide which one you want. They all look so good, don't they? So you finally choose one, you take a big bite, and it's either going to be that ooey-gooey chocolate that's just my favorite, or the caramel, or it's going to be the dreaded coconut, or even nastier, that jelly stuff. Well, life is like that, too. When we get up in the mornings, we expect things to go great, don't we? But you don't ever know what's going to happen. It could either be that caramel bite or that jelly bite. You might fall off your bike, skin your knees. You might have to eat something for lunch you don't like. So that's how we compare life in a box of chocolates. And that's why Jesus used parables to tell stories with. You know, the people back in Jesus' day didn't go to school like we do. Most of them couldn't even read and write. So they couldn't understand what Jesus was trying to tell them. So Jesus would compare it to something that they could understand. Like in our story when he told the parable of the widow and the judge, he was trying to show his disciples to never give up when they pray, to keep on praying. If humans, like that unfair judge in the story, will finally do something that is good for someone, like the widow, then we can be absolutely sure without a shadow of a doubt that God will answer our prayers if we don't give up. Just like the widow didn't give up. You know, God always does what's right. Sometimes you might feel like God didn't listen or he didn't answer your prayer the way you wanted him to but just remember that his plans are perfect that means when god does something different from what you ask for his choice is better he always does the things that are best for us even if we think differently and god loves to answer our prayers and give us wonderful gifts he sent jesus to die on the cross for us didn't he i mean that's just the best gift you can get we just have to pray and then believe or have faith and there's our word that god gives us what's best whether it's what we prayed for or not we have to trust that god is good and that he loves us and he is always going to do what's best for us, no matter what. Well, do you think there's a right or a wrong way to pray? Let's ask Pastor Brian. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Aaron from Benton, Arkansas asks, How should we pray? Is there a right or a wrong way to pray? Well, the question is about how we can pray, then there is no wrong way. Uh, sometimes people think that there's a certain way we have to pray, there's a certain posture, uh, we have to be kneeling and have our eyes closed, and, and there's a certain uh, cadence to our prayer or certain words we have to use, and, and that's not the case. Uh, we actually are called on to pray without ceasing. That means to pray all the time, to always be in a heart posture of prayer. So we can, of course, kneel and close our eyes all the time. That's just not practical. So we know that there's no right way to pray in that regard. So is there any wrong way to pray? Well, there kind of is. Let me explain. If our prayer is not motivated the right way, 
then that's probably not the right way to pray. So if, if we are praying not trusting in God, if we're praying for the wrong selfish reasons, that's not ideal. If we're praying just as a formality, uh, if we're just uttering words and we're not remembering it, we're talking with God, then that's probably not ideal either. Here's what prayer is. Prayer is simply talking with God. And if we remember that, if we remember that prayer is just having a conversation with Him, but also we remember who we're talking with. We're talking with God, a very real God who is our Father, but who is also holy. And so there's this, this balance here where we have to take this seriously. Uh, we don't want to come before God too casually or too flippantly, but at the same time, He's our Father, so we don't have to be rigid and, and, and stern. We can be casual, we can be ourselves in a proper way. And so a lot of prayer is, is having the right heart posture toward who God is. And then we just come before him and we just talk. We just share what is in our heart, what's on our mind with him, and just have that conversation with him. That's the right way to pray. Uh, again, the wrong way to pray has nothing to do with our, our physical posture or anything like that. It's where our heart is. So here's a question back for you. What do you enjoy about prayer and why? Good going, guys. Great answers to those questions. Let's go to our key passage now. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. That comes from John 14, verses 25 and 26. You know, Jesus taught all kinds of wonderful things about God and his kingdom and the scriptures, but it was more than anybody could remember or obey on their own. And this passage reminds us that everyone who believes in Jesus has the Holy Spirit living inside them. The Holy Spirit helps us remember what Jesus taught so we can obey him. Okay, guys, I need you to get your Bibles. Got some questions I want to ask you, and they all come from our lesson today. And remember, I've always told you that our lessons all come from the Bible, right? So every week, I want us to have our Bibles handy for this part of our lesson. I'll give you a second to get it. I want to see if y'all were listening to my story today. Okay, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 11. Hope you're ready. Okay, I want you to look down, and that's chapter 11. I want you to go to verse 8. Why did Jesus say the friend would help his neighbor even late at night? The neighbor asked boldly. That means the neighbor kept on and on asking. He never gave up. Okay, now look down at verses 11 and 12. Here's my next question. What did Jesus say a father would never give his son? A snake and a scorpion. Thank goodness. All right, now we should go to chapter 18. A few pages over. And look at verses 4 and 5. My question is, why did the unfair judge do the right thing for the widow? She kept asking, didn't she? She asked boldly. She never gave up. Have you ever prayed for something specific or special? Like maybe an Xbox or for someone you love to get well? And it seems like you prayed for it forever. Well, what happened? 
Did God answer it the way you wanted him to? I've asked God for things before and he didn't answer it in the way I wanted him to. But you know what? After all was said and done, he made the best choice for me. He answered it the way he wanted to answer it and his way was the best. He made the perfect choice for me, even if I didn't understand, because he's perfect and I'm not. Jesus taught people how to pray. He wanted us to understand that God loves his children. That's right. You are a child of God and I'm a child of God. We are his children. He gives us good things that we need and he enjoys that. We can pray in faith. There's our word again. And we know that he always answers us in his perfect way because he's perfect. We're not. He is. All right, guys. Do you know what time it is now? I think I'm going to get my crown. Can you get yours? Let's practice the gospel plan. All right. Here we go. God rules. We sinned. God provided. Jesus gives. And we respond by praising him and spreading his words. Good job, guys. I know y'all have gotten really good at that, and I cannot wait for us to get back together at church so we can show everybody what we've learned. Okay. Now it's time for my someone special. I hope you're ready, and I've got a really good one today. You ready to put your thinking caps on, guys? Okay, here we go. My someone special has green eyes. Not blue, green. Hooray, finally somebody that's not blue-eyed. <laughs> My someone special has brown hair. They are five feet, one and a half inches tall. Their birthday is November the 11th. And my someone special loves the color pink, but they don't like orange. Their favorite food is homemade pizza. Doesn't that sound good? Their favorite animal is a dog. And my someone special's favorite book is The Red Tent. Hmm. I don't think I've ever heard of that book before. Do you know who it is yet, guys? Let's keep going. Their favorite video game is Starview Valley. Nope. I don't know that one either. Now, here's a good one. Their favorite hobby is hand lettering. Strange, but true. My someone special loves football, and their favorite outdoor activity is hiking with their family. My someone special has an older brother. You got a guess? I'm down to the last two clues, and they're good ones. Unique fact. My someone special has one pupil, like the pupil in your eye, the dark center part. They have a pupil in their eye that is always smaller than the pupil in their other eye. There's only 10% of the people in the whole world that have this. So that makes them very unique, doesn't it? Okay, here's a weird fact. My someone special can turn their feet all the way in with all their toes touching. Well, when, when I read that, I had to just check that out. 
So if you can, stand up, and I want you to try it too. I got my grandson, Teddy, to help me out on this. So here he is with his feet, standing just like that. Now, my someone special can turn their toes all the way in to where they can touch each toe. This was Teddy's first attempt. He got his big toes to touch but my someone special can touch all 10 toes together. That's a lot harder than you think it is, guys. And this was his best effort. Not real sure that's what it's supposed to look like, but that's the best he could do, and I promise you he did better than I did. That's hard. <laughs> all right, it's time. I told you I had a good one today. Does anybody know who my someone special is? I'll give you one more hint. They are a CKM teacher. Can you tell me who it is? Who? If you said Miss Amy Jeffries, you're right. I cannot wait until we get back together again and she shows us that toe trick. Let's all remember to do that when we get to come back to church, okay? That's a really weird thing to do, Miss Amy. <laughs> but that was fun, wasn't it, guys? All right. Oh, my goodness. I think we've just about come to the end of another CKM Saturday. I just want to remind you today that our lesson told us about how Jesus taught people to pray. Prayer is really just talking to God. He wants to hear everything we have to say, what we want, what we need. We can tell him anything, just like you could tell your best friend or your mom or your dad or even your grandparents. He cares about how we feel and what we think and what we need and what we want. And remember the Holy Spirit that lives in each one of us can help us to pray every day and remember Jesus' words. I'm gonna pray for each and every one of you this week and I want you to pray for me and for each other too. I'm gonna pray that God hears all your prayers and I'm going to ask him to give you faith so that you're going to know that your prayers will be answered and God will always do what is best for you. You just never give up. If you don't get the answer right off, guys, just keep on and on, just like they did in our story today. And God will answer your prayers. Before we say the Lord's Prayer, I want to make uh, an announcement. CKM will not be started back August the 2nd. That's the date what we've been looking at, but I have decided that we need to wait until probably late August or even September. It's just not safe for us to get together yet, guys, and I wanna keep all of y'all safe. I love you too much for you to get sick. So um, we've also canceled Beat the Heat, you know, when we go to the Aquatic Center two for the same reason. Okay, let's say our Lord's Prayer together. I'm so glad that was in our lesson today. Okay, will you bow your heads, and close your eyes, and fold your hands and say it with me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Until next week. <laughs>